Hi guys and welcome back. I know it's been an age since my first video. It's not that I haven't wanted to do another one, it's just my time's been taken up. My heart's been stolen by my lovely new stencil cutter, um, which I've been trying to get to grips with the software for that. Um, and it hasn't been that easy, but fortunately my husband has, so all's well. Today we are going to be stenciling, but we're going to be stenciling on fabric. Now, you can do this with fabric paints, they work very well and you heat set them with an iron and they won't wash it off at all. Or you can use Fusion. And I've chosen today to use the Fusion Coal Black. Hello Bobby. And the park bench part of the Michael Penny collection for Fusion. Now, if any of you have used Fusion before and you have inadvertently got it on your clothing, you will know it does not come off. It, it doesn't. You don't need to heat set it. In fact, don't put your iron anywhere near it. It's acrylic. You iron it, it'll stick and you'll end up with a horrible mess. You just need to paint it on, stencil it on, or, or paint if you want to do a design on it, on a cushion, whatever. Um, leave it to dry and that's it it's done so today what we're going to do is my very plain looking workshop apron you can tell it's new there's not a scrap of paint on it anywhere but i've decided to add my name to the top pocket now i've cut a stencil this one which is going to go, fits perfectly on my pocket there. But what we must do, because this is fabric, the paint will travel through. On, on, for this, to be honest, it doesn't matter if I ended up with paint through there. But if you're doing a cushion cover, please remember to put some cardboard in, in there, otherwise you'll end up with the, the dregs of the pattern on the wrong side of your cushion. And it's, it's not attractive, you don't want that. So I've just used a piece of cardboard from a box. Uh, it's quite sturdy. I've cut it just to fit in there, like that. And it'll stop the transference of paint through from the stencil through to the, the back. So it'll all look neat and tidy, that's the theory anyway. Um, so it's just a matter of getting stenciled. Place it on. This fits quite snugly onto here. I'm not going to stick this down with masking tape. To be honest, there isn't anywhere really to stick it to that would be beneficial. The, the cardboard's raised it up a bit. And so what I'm going to be doing is, is, is holding it as a stencil. Your worst enemy when you stencil is a gap in between the stencil and your substrate because then you get a thing called bleed through. And it's when the, when the paint just seeps underneath the stencil edge, you lift it up and it's all fuzzy and it's not crisp, it's not what you want. So if you, if you really, really want to mask and tape it down, I'm sure, you could, I'm sure you could find somewhere to do it. But for me, I'm gonna hold it tight whilst I stencil. So as, a, as you saw before, the colors I'm gonna use are the park bench and the coal black. So I'm just going to get my stencil brush. It's always a good idea, no matter how long you've had a stencil brush to do this, because there, there are always bristles that come out. This is a really old one. It's seen a lot of stenciling. And to be honest, because you're using so little paint when you stencil, your brush gets very, very dry very quickly. And so you need to have some water close by to drop your brush into as soon as you've finished with one colour. Don't put it into the water in between times. If you're using green and you're going to come back to using green, leave it out. Wrap it in a bit of cling film, plastic bag, whatever. Don't put it in the water because you'll get it out again and it will have too much water on it. The paint will be too, too loose, too fluid and you'll get that dreaded bleed through again that we're talking about. So anyway, we've done loads of talking, not much action, so let's get going. Pick up some paint, 
charge your brush as it were a lot of paint on there miles too much so offload it look at all the paint on there just from dabbing on the lid and keep going until there is barely any I'm just going to offload some of this into a piece of shop cloth shop cloth guys available at Halfords get it in a roll like this don't confuse it with that other blue roll stuff that you get that's cheap which I also have in the workshop it's really great for minor spillages and catastrophes this will deal with any catastrophe uh, and believe me I have tried it um, it's really absorbent it's fantastic stuff um, so yeah bit of shop cloth unload unload your brush onto that and we're about there I think so making sure that it's central I'm happy it looks straight oh one more thing I meant to tell you I'm going to mask off the eyes in both the mist and the paint a lot because I want to do those in another colour. Now I could, if I was very careful, just avoid them with the, with the first colour. But it's just going to be easier if I stick a bit of masking tape over them. And then I don't need to be quite so careful. So that's them masked off. I can't get any paint on them. Okay, let's go. Now, really, 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 guys, make sure that your brush isn't too charged because fabric will wick the paint. You need it dry. And just pants up and down. There's no quick way to do this. With some, not with fabric, but with other things, you can swirl the brush and it is a quicker way of, of um, of putting stencils on which I'll show you later on a different video but for fabric you need to pounce it up and down I've got the hair stuck in there that's that's it let's check I'm complete there and so we continue pick up your paint from the stuff that you've already offloaded uh, there's no need to go back for more there's enough on there to do the whole thing so for a fantastic effect you're using very 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 little paint so there we are move on to the, the second part You'll see this stencil brush is just about giving up the ghost really to be honest I bought it from eBay it wasn't cheap but it's not good in a in a later video I'll show you some stencil brushes I've bought recently from the stencil studio and they are brilliant and I shall be selling those very soon Just have to trust your eyes when when there's enough on there's enough on you want enough but you certainly do not want too much and it goes relatively quickly and to be honest it's quite a nice job to do sitting here stenciling dog at my feet I mean husband's behind the camera we're here, the whole family. The paint a lot crew. I honestly don't know where I would have been this week without my husband because my new stencil machine, it's fantastic. It cuts wide stencils, it cuts thick stencils. It's a real industrial piece of kit. Oh my life, that software. I had a silhou Silhouette Cameo prior to that, and actually this one was cut on, on the Silhouette Cameo. And this is the thickest that the Cameo could cut, which was why we opted to go for a more industrial one to get better, more durable stencils. Uh, and that 
contorted my brain using that, but this new one, oh my goodness. Don't forget, every time you pick up paint, offload it. You're much better off with less than more. This brush is just about giving up the ghost, to be honest. It's very warm in here, and uh, due to all my chit-chatting, the paint on my plate's dry, so I'm going to have to pick up a little bit more. I personally don't wash my stencils uh, in between using them. You can, if you want to, um, do it quickly because it dries very, very fast. Um, I don't wash them because I always think there's the risk of catching some of the smaller pieces um, and bending them. And once you've done that, your stencil's just about jiggered, really, to be honest. It's no good. So. I don't wash them. I mean, it, what's building up there? Nothing. So just leave them to dry, flat to dry, and then use them the next time. Perfectly fine. Stenciling my finger here. Right, I think we're there with that colour. So as I said, when you've finished, and I have finished, I'll just give it a final check. I think think we're there. I think that's near enough. Um, pop it into water. It'll it'll dry and you know, ideally not up to the ferrule. Eventually a ferrule will go rusty. But you know you can see the paint starting to come off it there already, which is what you want. So now I'll remove the masking tape. From the protected letters, which are eyes in the form of paintbrushes. And just pop that over there. With another piece there, just so I don't go over the letters that I've already done. So you can see I've I've masked masked those off so I won't be getting paint where I, on the letters I've already done. And pop that down there. There's one more piece down the other side. Down there. Right now for the for these I'm going to use black. I thought it might stand out a bit, and I'm going to use the the cheapest. <laughs> cheapest little stencil brush. These are available in our pound shop. Three for a pound. I think the kids paint brushes maybe, I don't know. But for stenciling onto fabric, the grand. I did all my Christmas cushions using these. Um, at first they lose a million hairs, I have to tell you that, but I mean, I, you know, they're all right. I don't think I'd use them for stenciling on furniture particularly. The two, too floppy, but they're grand for for uh, stenciling on fabric. It's always worth having a look in the pound shop, you know. They have all sorts of things. Got some fabulous uh, slate hearts. So the same procedure. Charge your brush up, offload it, and then stencil you whatever it is you're stenciling. Christmas we did some lovely ones. Uh, with reindeer and baubles and you name it. So that's that. Offload your brush. Not quite enough on there. You can see the way this bends when I'm doing it. In an ideal world, your stencil brush wouldn't do that. It would be rigid. I did actually cut the ends off 
one of these to see if I could make a stencil brush. Um, and it felt very hard at the time, but actually I've washed it since then. It feels a bit better. So that might be an answer. Just chop the ends off. You've got to love fusion, haven't you? Hey, I mean, it's just... Can you think of anywhere where you can't use fusion? It's just fantastic stuff. I'm struggling with that brush, it's too bendy. So I'm just gonna try this, this one that I've cut back. with fabric in particular make sure you haven't got too much paint on and you might have to spend longer pouncing up and down but hopefully and we'll see in a minute you shouldn't get any bleed through drop that into your water as well right let's see this is always an exciting moment isn't it let's take these uh, bits of masking tape off Are you ready? Right, let's go. One, two. Look at that. That's fabulous. What do you think, guys? Hmm? Cheap stencil, teensy amount of fusion. No, now I've got my very own apron. Catch you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.